Hello, welcome to the BMC Learning Series. Today we'll be covering Main View Basics Part 2. You've already completed Main View Basics Part 1. In Part 2, we'll take a closer look at navigating in Main View and then how to customize Main View. We'll start with navigation. Note that there are a couple of brief quizzes along the way. Just use pause to take your time to consider the questions before the answers are displayed a few seconds later. This is the primary main view menu. From here, you can access all of the main view solutions. These options will present submenus for each specific solution in that space. Main view is typically the first entry in the submenu. Duplex Manager is accessed via option P. It hosts common main view facilities such as security, alarm management, and context definitions. The Plex Manager can also be used as a launch point into various main view solutions. This is an example of the main view easy menu. Easy menus provide a straightforward way to locate information for particular metrics or situations. As the name indicates, easy menus are easily navigated. To use an easy menu, place your cursor on the name of what you're interested in and press enter. Main view will then transfer you to the appropriate display. There are extensive easy menus throughout the main view monitors. Easy menu view names begin with the letters E, Z. The greater than to the left of an entry indicates submenu. The dot to the left indicates data display. Hyperlinks are context sensitive view transfers. Fields with hyperlinks can be identified by their highlighted headings, white by default. Hyperlinks are point and shoot. Simply place your cursor on a value and press enter. Hyperlinks can transfer between main view products. Here's an example of a hyperlink between main view IP and main view for MVS. We are also seeing a main view for IP view that displays information on TCP IP stacks. If I position my cursor on the field for stack paging and press enter, the window is transferred to a main view for ZOS view. It provides a paging overview for the TCP IP stack that it was linked from. Hyperlinks are easy and intuitive. Using a hyperlink on the leftmost field will generally result in a menu showing detail on the selected item or a detailed view of metrics available for the selected item. View names can be issued as commands within a main view monitor. As you become more experienced with main view, you will likely find yourself using view names instead of menus to navigate, but either way it will get you to the same place. The Views view lists all available views. You can then select one of the listed views to display it in the window. You can also set ad hoc filters in the Views view to search for views of interest. There's an example of this later in the session. As you use Main View, we suggest you make note of the view names on the window information line. To enter a view name as a command is easy. Simply type in the name of the view you wish to display, then press Enter. It is also possible to save views with alternative names. This can be a handy way to build your own limited command list to get to specific views. The Views command can be used to display all the available views in a particular main view monitor. Let's take a closer look at how this might be used. Enter views on the command line to display a list of all available views. To see a list of only the customized views available to the main view session, enter the user view name on the command line. You can use the include mask and exclude mask commands to display headers that allow you to define ad hoc filters. This can be helpful to search for keywords in the description fields of the view definitions. Here we type ink mask and then press enter. Then let's say we want to find all the views related to locking within main view for DB2. We can enter our argument in the line below the label to filter the list of views. And here we can see a list of views matching the filters. At this point, you can scroll down the list and hyperlink on the view name or specify additional filters to further restrict the list. Main view employs the concept of view stacking that behaves similarly to that of a web browser. 
When you use the PF3 or end command, main view returns the window to the previously displayed view without refreshing the data. This behavior allows you to retrace your steps and pursue a different avenue when investigating anomalous conditions. The reset command can be used to close all of your windows, leaving only one terminated window open. You can then use the set command to populate the window. The clear command clears the stack for the current window only. The quick command will close all windows and return to the primary menu. Here's a quick quiz. You should have a good sense of how to navigate within MainView at this point. Now let's cover MainView customization, which refers to customizing MainView displays. The BBS def file contains MainView screen definitions. The BBV def file contains the MainView view definitions. When a view or screen is saved, it is written to the first database in the file concatenation. The allocation of user-level libraries is determined during product customization. Until they allocate their user-level libraries, users will be prompted to do so each time they start a main view session. Views and screens are displayed from the first hit in the concatenation. To share customized views and screens, you can copy the PDS members in the BBVDEF and BBSDEF files. Here's a walkthrough of how you might use screen customization. First, we type HS on the command line and position the cursor where we want to split the screen and press Enter. We can use the set command to set the context, product, or view for a window. We type in the set command on the command line and press Enter. And we are presented with a window to allow the specification of the context, product, and view. In this case, we want to look at main view for Kix region overview, C region. After entering the values, press PF3. And now our screens have two windows with different views. It's also possible to split the screen vertically using the VS command. Positioning the cursor on the window information line splits across windows. If the cursor is positioned above or below the information line, then the screen is only split on that side of the line. Up to 20 windows can be opened. Type VS on the command line and position the cursor where you want to split the screen and press Enter. And main view opens a terminated window for us. Now let's populate the window with data. To do this, we can use the set command again. Type set on the command line and press Enter. We specify what product, context, and view we wish to display. So here in this example, we're going to show the DB2 status view, STDB2, in main view for DB2, and we want to see all the DB2 subsystems. After specifying the input values, press PF3, and our third window is now populated. Working with screens can be a useful way to organize your main view displays. Windows within screens support multiple time frames, as well as different contexts and even monitors. Again, up to 20 windows can be opened on a screen. Main view will adjust to different screen sizes so that you can garner more real estate by changing your terminal session log mode. Okay, here's a list of common screen commands. Some of these we have already covered, but it's important to have a core set of commands to use main view effectively. As we've seen, HSVS will split the screen at the cursor position. ASU is automatic screen update. This command will cause your screen to refresh automatically. Be sure to identify your attention and PA1 keys before using ASU. We've shown you how to use the set command to establish or modify the data displayed. The context command is very important. We'll cover context on the next slide. Similar to the Views command, the Screens command will display all available screens. Close will close the current window. Maximize will expand the current window to fill the entire screen. Restore will return the windows to the original sizing after using the Maximize command. Next and Preve allow you to cycle through your windows when you have maximized a window. 
The context command is the primary way to control which targets are to provide data to the view. Most typically, the context command is issued with one operand, either all, a subsystem name, or a custom context defined at the site. More advanced users will use the context command to quickly shift between main view monitors. To do so, specify the con command with the context product and view. For example, to display a view C region in main view for kicks and display all targets, you would issue con all MV kicks semicolon C region. Or if I'm in main view for kicks already looking at C region with a context of kicks one, I can quickly change it to kicks four by issuing con kicks four. Let's take a look at a couple of these commands in action. We're going to maximize window two to fill the entire screen. You may want to do this if you see a value that warrants further investigation. The max command will maximize the window. Use WN to direct the command to a specific window, such as W2.max. Instead of using W2 to prefix the max command, we could have changed the cur window to value two. Here the window has been maximized. It's possible to view windows one and three, even though window two has been maximized. You can use the next prev commands to navigate windows while in max. If we type next on the command line and press enter, we go to the next window, in this case, window three. Let's say we're done with our diagnosis session and wish to return our screen to its normal monitoring layout. Type restore on the command line and press enter. And you can see the screen has been restored to the original format. Here's another quiz. It's sometimes desirable to change certain ways main view is presenting data in a view. Fortunately, main view has a robust, easy to use view customization dialog to modify views. Use the customize command to begin the view customization dialog. First, navigate to the view you wish to customize. Then enter cust on the command line and press enter. The view customization options are displayed. Also note that there are now lettered headings above the columns in our view. This is so we can reference them with our customization options. Now we'll see how a few of these options are used to modify a view. Let's say we are only interested in seeing address spaces with a total delay of greater than 30%. We identify the customization option, which is L, and we identify the total delay field, which is the column H. So we specify L, H on the command line and press enter. You can see in the middle of the screen, some fields have appeared that you can use to specify your options, or in this case, a filter condition. We modify the condition to be greater than 30 and press enter. And the data is filtered at the bottom of the display. You can specify filters for multiple fields. Using where allows you to build complex filter arguments but we won't be covering the where clause in this session. It's also possible to modify the thresholds for any of the fields in the view. Like we did with the filter, we specify the option and the column letter to modify the thresholds. In this case, we want to modify the thresholds for the total delay percentage field. So we specify T space H for the thresholds on column H. And when enter is pressed, main view shows the area in the middle of the screen to allow the thresholds to be modified. On the left, you specify the conditions for the thresholds. Be sure to specify your most restrictive argument last as main view evaluates the threshold conditions top down. Again, in the middle of the screen, the attributes to associate with thresholds are specified. And on the right is a key to which color the attributes represent. In this instance, I'm going to modify the thresholds to some different values by overtyping the condition fields and pressing enter. Thresholds and attributes can be inherited from other fields using the inherit from equal greater than field on the right. To use this field, specify the column header of the field that will be used to determine the thresholds for the targeted field. It's also possible to substitute a literal value instead of a metric. This may be useful for bar graphs. 
When we hit PF3 to exit view customization, we are prompted to save the view. If we say no, the customized view will be displayed until the view is redisplayed with new data. If you say yes, you'll be prompted for a view name. Modify the view name to a name you can use as a command to display the customized view. In this case, I will use the name test view. When enter is pressed, a new view is saved. Note that the window information line still shows the original view name, J delay Z. This is because main view presents a temporary customized version of the view until it is redisplayed. Also note the message in the upper right corner, which informs us that the view test view was created. Since we're still looking at the temporarily modified J delay Z view, let's display another view, LPAR stat, by entering the LPAR stat view name as a command and pressing enter. The LPAR stat view is displayed. Now we can display our customized view, test view, by typing test view on the command line and pressing enter. And now the customized view, test view, is displayed. Type in the views command and press enter to display all available views. Now we want to delete our view since we really don't care about this one. Let's locate our customized view, test view, using the locate command. In this example, we issue L space test view. There's test view. Now enter the D for delete line command to delete test view and press enter. Test view has now been deleted. In addition to setting filters and thresholds, main view provides many other customization options. The E option toggles on and off the display of excluded fields in a view, that is fields that are not normally displayed in the view. The I, X options include or exclude fields from a view. The Z option summarizes the data in a view by the targeted field. The F option allows for formatting fields. With the Format option, you can modify field sizes and labels and specify how to report values for summarization records. The M option gives us the means to move fields around in a view. The O option allows us to specify the sort sequence for the data in the view. The R option is used to repeat a field. This can be helpful for adding bar graphs or creating new metrics in a summarized view. The H option is where we would modify the hyperlinks associated with a field. And option P allows review of the positional parameters for the view. As you might expect, the positional parameter can be passed as filter arguments when issuing view names as commands. Here's another quiz. MainView Alarm Manager is a powerful feature of the MainView infrastructure and comes free of charge with any MainView monitor. Alarm Manager delivers the ability to monitor identified metrics continuously in the background and generate exceptions when thresholds are reached. Alarm Manager can interface with automation for additional actions. And it can monitor any view data element from any of the MainView monitors. Alarms are triggered from user-defined thresholds. Filters can be set to limit what records are evaluated for the alarm definition. A nice thing about alarms is they contain built-in hyperlinks to the source view of the alarm. The Make Alarm dialog is supported for both the 3270 and Explorer interfaces. MainView Threshold Advisor is another part of the MainView infrastructure that is provided free of charge with your MainView monitors. Threshold Advisor captures targeted metrics to determine meaningful thresholds. Analytics are performed on a distributed system, and thresholds can be pushed to the mainframe to update thresholds used in views and alarms. Threshold Advisor provides best practice suggestions for metrics to capture. And it monitors thresholds for increasing and decreasing data trends. It's possible to define differing thresholds depending on the time of day or day of week to accommodate your environment and workloads. And here's a list of monitors that MainView provides in order to manage your System Z ecosystem. That concludes this session on MainView Basics Part 2. 
For more videos on MainView and other BMC solutions, please visit our BMC Mainframe YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash BMC Software Mainframe slash featured. That's it for this session. Thank you and see you next time.